there are some movies that you really can't say anything bad about. When talking about new releases, it usually happens because of the enormous amounts of hype on the road to and after release, waiting any dissent in the prevailing opinion of the film gets crushed under the threats of the hype tank. But then there's the ones where they have that thing, those little specks of Elvis dust that make sure that people love it way more than they should for way longer than they should. We all have our own. You won't hear me go on about how Tango and Cash sucks for one. And even though I can hardly say that I'm not affected by it, there's some movies where I just don't get it. Episode 3 springs to mind, Airbud, and Beethoven for that matter, and then, of course, there's Matilda. Time seems to have finally softened the love for Matilda, at least if you believe IMDb users who overall seem to rate it a solid meh out of 10. But I remember people standing the hell out of this thing when I was a kid, and even then my reaction was a prepubescent, really? This one. Not the Hunchback of Notre Dame or James and the Giant Peach or... Walt Disney Pictures presents Sinbad and mm -hmm. Sworn to Serve. A little pelvic thrust. Try this. Uh. See that? Oh, they like that. They like that. Sworn to be wild. I'm a secret service agent. I'm not playing. Look out! First Kid. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a copy of you later. No, this is the movie that people around me liked enough to defend as though it was a member of the family. Well, I've watched a lot of it recently, by which I mean it was on a rerun at a house where people still watch TV for some reason, and someone was playing it on Disney Plus a couple of days later when I was around. To my surprise, time has done nothing to help me understand the fondness for this movie. So, now that the average age of the person who grew up with the movie is somewhere in the mid-30s and ostensibly they have something better to do, won't you sit for a while and see me try to make sense about what is it that makes people really like this thing? Writing the script certainly helped me figure out why people like it. For one, technically speaking, the movie is really well produced. This is thanks to great work done by great talent, starting with the director and world heritage person, Danny DeVito. Do not diddle kids, it's no good diddling kids! According to DeVito, his sixth outing at the director's chair was inspired by his kids who brought the book home one day and read it with him. He loved the story so much that he started the process to develop it. By this point, DeVito already had people he knew he could rely on to understand his vision and help him make it manifest. Frequent collaborator David Newman is hired to do the soundtrack, which is acting at least as hard as the on-screen talent. He also hires Stefan Sapsky for the cinematography. His work is likely familiar to you. Should the man rise when he accepts his cup of tea? May lump sugar be taken with the fingers? Mm, no. Uh, is it good form to accept a second cup? All right, friends. Prepare for scene 32. Mr. Wood, where's the cockpit, sir? You're standing in it. Place it. As you can see, we're in good hands. Hands that are rounded out by scriptwriter couple Nicolas Kazan and Robin Swicord, who are responsible for the screenplay. All in all, quite a good roster, and it's not like the on-screen telling is letting the side down either. There's the director and the director's wife, of course, always great in their performances. Tracy Walter and the late Paul Rubens as FBI agents, Paul for once being an anchor of sanity in a sea of over-the-top antics. And Beth Davids as Miss Honey with a performance worthy of the teacher's suckering name. And then we get to Pam Ferris. Much too good for children. It'd be quite easy to blame my dislike of Matilda on Pam Ferris' performance as Agatha Trunchbull. Especially since the visual medium of the film takes her already child hating, physically abusive, inheritance stealing, possible homicidal sadist character and cranks it up to 12. You will be put away in a place where not even the crows can land their droppings on you. All that talent behind the scenes has one mission, to make the Trunchbull scarier than anything that a child could possibly imagine from reading the book. Every uncomfortable wide-angle lens shot, every reminder that she has Olympian strength and determination, 
Even the revelation that superstition is her weakness is designed to make her feel impossible to overcome. After all, if you have to rely on the fickleness of the supernatural to even get her in a position where something could be done about her, the situation is dire enough that most kids would basically throw in the towel. A key plot point is that the reason that she gets away with so many things is that every punishment she does is so outlandish that any sensible parent would just dismiss it as bullshit. Her performance makes sure that that's a believable assumption without making every single parent in the city look completely brain dead. Apart from the Wormwoods, but that's beside the point. All of these characters come together surrounding our main character, Matilda Wormwood, played by Mara Wilson doing the best performance of her film career. It's sobering to think that this is just one of the many things she's done through her career, especially since she's been focusing mostly on writing, including her memoir in 2016, and one of Cracked's best articles back when Cracked was a website that people would actually want to visit. 2012 saw her return to smaller roles, voice acting and web appearances. Okay, not to disrupt your like unholy rage or anything, but uh, you've got boobs now. And that's kind of weird to make sure like a child star and I didn't think you'd actually hit puberty. And taking all of that into account, it's almost unfortunate that she's so darn good in this role that it will continue to haunt her work for the foreseeable future. So the on-screen talent is on point, it's directed by one of the best human beings in show business, and everyone involved in it has brought their A-game. So who else could I blame? Roald Dahl? I mean, the script was unsurprisingly changed from the book, the most obvious modification being moving the action from brutal Buckinghamshire to... LA, LA, baby. But even the book itself was not Dahl's vision. Clearly Dahl wrote it, but with the overt hatred of television as the polluter of minds and the triumph of the book as the superior medium of knowledge and entertainment. The story as we now know it is that the first draft of what would become Matilda had the main character as a much more malicious child, the sort of horror movie kid who tortured her parents. It took the intervention of Dahl's editor to get him to completely revise his first draft, which Roxburgh describes as hopeless. And Dahl clearly agreed, which is amazing for someone whose legacy seems to have settled in the great writer greater assholes section of history. And it's when looking at all of this together, the perfect intersection of the writer admitting his wrong for once, the children bringing the book to the attention of the one director that could provide it with the perfect live action adaptation, his knowledge and recruiting of the right people to do it, all of it combining to create something that, despite my dislike of it, is a technically good movie which is near as objectively as possible, excellent at presenting its subject matter. There is no sense in remaking something like Matilda because it's already the best version of itself. Matilda is perfectly created for its target audience, the kids who bring the book to their parents and the parents who appreciate the dark humor and feel that children need to know that there is not just likable people in the world, reminding them at the same time that those people do exist. And I think here is where they lost me back in the day. Maybe I was the perfect age to not feel a part of either group or maybe I just didn't have enough trauma inducing people in my life. Not yet. But there was simply no anchor in this movie for me. And by the time I could discuss movies beyond like or don't like, Patilla was already one of those movies where even pointing at the flaws can be interpreted as an attack on someone's growing experience. It's an interesting thought exercise. And one that gets easier when you get that ultimately, entertainment is entertainment. The people who come out of the other side of puberty with the ability to touch grass, self-develop and hold a face-to-face -face conversation can recognize that even if it is an important part of your life, it's not one you should really build your life around. 